Alexa broke out of her memories and reflected that since she'd arrived in Texas, despite her earnest efforts toward a new direction in life, her own gruesome past had threatened to pull her under with every reflection. And tonight's memories were no exception. And yet, she felt it had been necessary to review the facts in detail since this ethereal blackmailer operating under the alias of Angelo definitely knew her sullied history at home and abroad. Incriminating facts had secretly arrived in old newspaper clippings and encrypted emails that she could not trace. Angelo had unique access to her in every venue of her life, affording him a callous margin of power and compelling her to accept his assassination contracts totally against her convictions. So she needed to remember, to remember what she desperately wanted to forget and to look for any connections she'd missed before. This current quest had exhausted her, and she wanted to rest now inside this designated money drop, which was not her ideal location. Though she tried to muster courage, Alexa was reluctant to enter the cold, dark, and unsettling cathedral that seemed to accuse her and caused substantial guilt to overwhelm her. But now the bleeding sirens were growing closer. Only a few moments remained before they would investigate this locality, but hopefully not the church. She leaned against the coarse exterior wall and nervously drew a deep breath. She watched it wax white in the frosted air and gradually diminish from sight. She was deeply incensed and weary of this villainous game into which Angelo had coerced her. Regret was her constant companion. Each aspiration, every hard-earned dream was rapidly dissolving from her grasp. But then, she had learned from her dad that dreams were elusive, and hers in particular didn't matter. She swallowed hard and angrily attempted to wipe away her headache with the back of her gloved hand. The sirens shrieked with closing proximity and Alexa proceeded to the door, and as previously arranged, she found it unlocked. She slipped inside, muffling the piercing blasts as patrol cars moved down the block. Guardedly, Alexa steadied her back against the closed door and drew her Glock. Fixing her sights over the barrel, she scanned the length of the room. When she could sense only shadows, she holstered the gun inside her jacket and focused her attention on the front of the room, where a dull light faintly glowed from a large brass cross suspended above the center platform. Alexa moved into the light and checked her watch. As if on cue, the sidewalk street lamps flared, casting fragmented lights through many split segments of stained glass. As the dark shadows within faintly lifted, the rows of pews came into manageable view and allowed her to move down the center aisle until she reached the seventh row, where she moved in and sat at the juncture of two benches. Carefully, her gloved fingertips explored the underside of the juncture and ripped the tape loose breeding a sizable manila envelope stuffed with large bills. Payoff cash. And, unfortunately, runways and fashion designing did have operating costs. Elaborate and extensive expenses beyond even her greatest estimations. But Alexa was not naive. Her blackmailer's intentions were not to support her legitimate career but to buy her services, to buy her loyalty, hit by hit, payoff by payoff. Every encrypted instruction, every dynamic of every fateful demand and reminder was calculated by Angelo, this hostile and spineless creature operating from behind a cover and leaving nothing to chance. Since his first message, Alexa was inextricably bound to him, She realized she could never escape her past and there would be eternal retributions. But she would make certain Angelo got his share of damnation.
She worked quickly and stuffed the bundle of bills into her coat pocket. As she surveyed his selection of surroundings, probably chosen to pain her conscience and prove his control over her, she decided that her torment and manipulation were no longer in the approximated range of tolerance. Time was up for Angelo. She intended to search out his identity and end his control. Alexa began formulating a plan in the secluded darkness and reviewed the clues to his identity. So far, her three contracts were men of local notoriety with political connections. It was imperative to her survival to investigate the backgrounds of these men for any common threads that might unravel Angelo's identity. She leaned back on the pew, mulling over the missing pieces in this enigma. Like Angelo's motivation in selecting her as his personal assassin, Though, obviously, as a former sharpshooter with a scandalous past, she was vulnerable. Though his ulterior motive was obscure, Alexa suspected it reached far beyond her. Alexa stared at the stained glass windows, oddly shaped, disjointed pieces of glass fighting to create a lucid image, just like her life. She wiped her forehead and slipped out of the pew, she reached for the side door when flashing blue lights diverted her attention back to the stained glass windows. She dropped and crawled to the nearest window, impatiently leaning in for a closer look. A spotlight blazed through the window, momentarily blinding her as footsteps crept around the building. In one continuous flow, the auburn-haired beauty pulled and cocked her weapon. She crept beneath a pew as the cop's footsteps stopped at the side door. The grip on her gun tightened and she listened attentively to the door as it jarred open, allowing an abrupt shaft of light to explosively intrude. The cop stepped inside, gun drawn. He scanned the altar with the beam of his flashlight, then swept silently but deliberately across the pews. As the door slammed shut, Alexa edged out and stood to stretch. Immediately, the door opened and the light made a final sweep. She ducked behind the solid end of the pew, focusing through the Glock's sights, but he exited and closed the door behind him. Gun still drawn, Alexa watched until the car pulled away from the curb, flashing lights off, creeping like a cat prowling for a rat. Heading for her apartment, she left the church by the same side door and stayed well behind their searchlights, sneaking into the shadows of the back alleys and creeping through narrow passages while avoiding street lights and passing cars. Within minutes, Alexa spotted the garage entrance to Oscarton's famously luxurious hotel, where she was the unlikely occupant of the coveted penthouse suite. Confidently, she approached the garage elevator, but her attention was unavoidably diverted to several circular puffs of smoke floating lazily in the air and noticed some cowboy boots crossed on the back of a chair. Wow, you're working late. Want me to send up a snack? She recognized Ray Talbert's voice as he emerged from behind a post, out for his evening break. Ray! You're really the best. Let me check the fridge and I'll call if I need something. Good enough. Let me know. Talbert smiled beneath his broad mustache. Ray, you're actually willing to give up your break to make me a sandwich? That's either admirable or crazy. Either way, it's definitely appreciated. Thank you. Ray nodded and watched her disappear behind the elevator doors. He checked his watch and spoke to someone concealed in the shadows. That was close. Maybe we should consider meeting someplace else. He whispered. Within moments, Alexa stepped into the lavish apartment generously provided by her main buyer and owner of this hotel, Stony Brighton. Then she turned her attention to dinner. She found the refrigerator pitifully bare, just like her stomach. Sorting out Angela's identity and schemes would wait until morning. 
but she was still unnerved and desperately needed peace and quiet to unwind. If she could only get a little rest, be at the top of her game. Just a little rest was all she needed. Season 1, Episode 2 of Fashion Assassin Podcast, read by the author from the trilogy, Consuming Fire in Alexa Sylvan Novel by C.B. Hoffman. Available on Audible, Amazon, iBookstore, and barnesandnoble.com and cbhoffman.com. Come.